Autumn for Black Tree, written and read by Oliver Tonic. This is a completed novella, read as a series. These last few episodes are the ending of the story. You can enjoy it from here on, but if you haven't already, I would highly recommend going back to the beginning to get the full impact. Now, if you're still here, enjoy the conclusion of Autumn for Black Tree. Episode 15 Birthright Paxis had been tossed by her ankle in such a way that her body was flipping awkwardly. Her vision spun and her arms and legs flailed about her in the black. She couldn't figure out what was up and what was down. The only markers she had were the torches spinning in and out of her field of view. She turned in mid-fall and lit up the dark. She always managed to land on her feet when she changed. Her tail righted her, and she landed on all fours on a slightly elevated stage next to a podium, growling up at her captor. Caporia's wings hovered her meters above the floor of the festivities hall. She stayed there, swaying back and forth. Paxis thought she looked like a grotesque bumblebee. One claw reached for the other and gripped the hilt of the sword still stuck inside of it. Paxis could see her grit her sharp teeth. In one swift motion, Caporia ripped it out of her right claw with her left and flung it with pain and fury to the wall. It soared with speed and stuck into the horizontal beam of a high wall near the ceiling, far above them both. The Beetle Queen dropped to the ground and the large auditorium quaked. She reached for the large tablecloth of an unset table next to her and draped it over her considerable body. Paxis thought it a strange thing to see a monster wear a tablecloth like a sash. But then again, she was a cat on fire wearing shorts and a top. Slowly, the queen began to change back. Her massive claws rubbing together to ease her pain became soft royal hands again. Her whole body was covered now by the white cloth and her face was stern as she looked at her fiery daughter. Paxis changed back too, and the two women looked at one another. Caporia began. I just don't understand you. What do you think you're going to get out of this? Have you told him the whole story? How you burned our land and hurt our people? What is your plan? To live as a monster married to a man who hunts monsters? Her daughter stayed quiet. She knew no good would come of an answer. Caporia's nostrils flared in frustration. She snorted, almost like a bull. A mother has to do a mother's job. You could never understand that. Someday you'll have children of your own and you'll see what it takes to make them good people. Paxis held her tongue. It still wasn't the time to speak. She could feel her skin heating up. All you had to do was farm for me. You fought me every step of the way. You never could just be easy. And look at the damage you've done. Tearing down the land with your own bare hands. Tears welled up in Paxis' eyes. She wouldn't let them fall, though. She wouldn't give her the satisfaction. Wherever you go, you'll always be the same. You'll see. A few years from now, you'll tell me how hard it is. You'll tell me how you've chosen to cope with living how you are. And you won't be so hard on how your dear mother chose to handle things. Your older sister had her moments, too. But she came around. Paxis looked at her. After all these years, she was still stunning to look at. Genuine sadness clouded her features. You are so beautiful. How did you get so ugly? Caporia threw her head back a bit like the statement had struck her. But her face showed disgust. She wouldn't even entertain the deeper thought behind it, and Paxis could see that in her eyes. But what she couldn't see was if it was denial of what she had become or because she was so far gone that she couldn't even comprehend the notion of being any other way. You condemn me now, her mother said, but people like you and me have to take control of what we were born with. Whatever it takes, you'll have to learn how to live with it in your own way. You'll know that someday. Paxis couldn't hold back any longer. Whatever I am... The difference between you and me is that I won't make innocent people suffer to keep a semblance of control in my life. Caporia's eyes widened in rage once more. 
They turned maroon and split. Her transformation was rapid, but Paxis tried to stay light on her feet, anticipating her next move. The Beetle Queen opened her rows of teeth and out-rocketed a boiling ball of congealed hot wet. Paxis rolled and it missed her by inches. She looked down for a split second just to see where it had landed. The stage floor was bubbling and steaming a liquid substance of an olive green color. She was behind the speaker's stand now, and she rolled once more as the stuff shot out and melted a chunk out of the podium. She staggered to her feet as a voice echoed through the hall. Paxis! Across the large room, past the long tables, chairs, and the torches lining the walls, was Barley. Caporia scraped her claws on the ground as she turned to look at him. Her legs spun her body toward him and she screeched. He covered his ears as acid was hurled toward him from her toothy maw. In a flash, he produced a wooden shield on his forearm that immediately began to sizzle and melt when it came in contact with the queen's projectile. Barley shook his arm wildly, trying to get it off, but soon felt the muted burn of the acid as it cut down to his skin. He deadened and ripped off the shield, but by the time he did, Caporia was already bearing down on him. He had just enough time to make a new shield growth on both of his arms as she smacked him to the side of the room. He struck a stained glass window and cracked it, but was stopped by partially hitting the stone wall it was set in. Caporia's elytra snapped open to reveal her beating wings. She rose from the ground and spun all the way around, taking note of both her opponents in the room. Sweeping down with powerful adeptness, she scooped up Paxis again with her mini hind legs and began spinning with her in her grip to gain momentum. She lifted higher and higher toward the tall ceilings and finally hurled Paxis to the same side of the room as Barley. Paxis lit up and spread out her paws in cat form, reaching out for anything to grab onto as she went flying toward the wall in stained glass. She knew if the impact of the wall collision didn't put her down, the fall after certainly would. Suddenly, the branches of a tree crawled up the side of the wall, covering it in a thick maze of places to sink her claws into. Paxis caught herself and held tight as the branches grew and grew across the wall and curved at the corner of the room when it reached it. She looked back and saw Barley on the floor growing foliage furiously. He had placed his hands on the wall, and branches and vines were shooting out from his shoulders and forearms and creating a tremendous consortium of timber extensions. The tree grew in a mass and extended across the sides of each wall of the auditorium, cascading upwards. Paxis rode it as Caporia shot in a maddened fury at the brightly glowing fire cat twisting up with the branches. When the tree stopped, it had grown in a corkscrew shape all around the room until it had reached the ceiling. That's when Paxis saw the glimmer of a sword in the light of her fire. She released her claws that had been extended in the bark and began making great leaps higher and higher towards her destination. Caporia hit the branches with her ramming horn so hard that wood splintered everywhere she tore through the wooden maze after her. She gained on her, inching closer and closer. The beetle even shot her acid ahead of her to catch her in her ascent. Paxis took one last leap and her paw became a hand as it gripped the hilt of the sword and ripped it from its place. In one motion, as her body changed to human form, she turned and sunk the blade right into the softest part of the queen's ramming horn. The sound of a bellowing howl hit the top of the ceiling and arched down, filling the room. Paxis found herself launching upward and crashing through roofing. She was in the night sky, looking at the stars, holding only the handle of a blade lodged in a beast's head. Higher and higher she went. The beast was screaming. It was enough to rattle her bones but Paxis couldn't decide if she was more afraid of that or the height of the drop she would experience if she wavered now. One of the queen's claws yanked her from her hold and squeezed her tightly in her grip. As the wind whipped through Paxis' hair, the monster looked dead in her eyes and spoke in a blood-curdling voice that her vocal cords were clearly not made for. You will never be better than me, it said. The claws felt like they would crush her, maybe even sever her in two. 
She had her arms held against them, trying to pry them open enough for her to breathe. Paxis mouthed something for lack of air. Caporia brought her close to her ear. I already am, she said. A flame erupted and white-hot teeth pierced the claws wrapped around her. Caporia shook her arm violently to put her out while still going up. The pain made her loosen her claws and the fire cat scratched up her arm, shoulder, and then back as it reached her beating wings. With teeth and claws bared, she caught a wing and ripped. The velocity of the fall, as well as the spinning from Caporia desperately flapping her one good wing, was enough to put Paxis' fire out. She held on with her claws to the front of her mother's horn, and could only pray that the armored beetle's body would break her fall. On the ground, Barley watched as a new hole was created in the ceiling. He jumped out of the way as it rained down debris and bits of the roof. The ground shook as the weight of the monster reached the floor of the festivities hall. Gradually, the dust settled. Barley got up and went to the scene. There was no movement. Granite littered the ground around the hulking body of the queen. Then the ring of sliding metal echoed in the room. Barley's eyes welled up as he saw her. Paxis walked out on two legs from behind the horn of the beast. I got your sword. She said. Hey guys, it's Oliver. Thank you so much for coming to my little corner of the internet to give me a listen. Give me a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to hear more of this or any of my upcoming stories I have in the works. I also have a Patreon. Your support helps me out a lot. I'll have weekly episodes up until all 18 parts of this story are fully released. So stay tuned.